Well, the models continue to suggest a drying theme as we move towards mid-month onwards, but also a chillier flavour in the weather as we go forward also. Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Logan's European Outlook. It is the 11th of April, and I'm excited to say that the Global Weather and Climate Report live stream is back this upcoming Sunday for the 88th edition. Uh, we will be looking at the um, prospects of the upcoming 2024 Atlantic hurricane season, as well as talking further about the summer of 2024 as well. So plenty of content here on the channel coming up in the next few days so be sure to like share and subscribe if you haven't already done so want to first and foremost say that the arctic oscillation is a really really strongly positive at the moment which is quite interesting uh, what real significance that has on our weather um, is subject to question i suppose but uh, i just thought it was quite interesting how strongly positive the arctic oscillation is but also it's expected to go from strong positive back to negative once again. And that may explain a little bit with regards to the drying theme and the increased chance of colder than average conditions uh, as we move towards the latter half of, uh, of April. So it has been very wet. We've already discussed in yesterday's video, Edinburgh has seen double the April average rainfall. And, uh, you know, many parts of the UK is running um, close to average for the entire month. And remember, we're only on the 11th of April, so very significant rainfall. We've also seen a warmer than average month and a very pleasant day. Blustery, strong west to southwest the winds with temperatures exceeding 16 here at Marfogan Weather HQ this afternoon. Back at the weekend, just gone. Uh, the temperature reached 17.4 for the warmest day of the year so far here. But we know that we are going to continue to see the temperatures rise uh, in the coming months. We'll look at the month multi model run in, the, in a little second here. As promised, it will be the first look at uh, the long range models for the upcoming summer season. So I'm excited to bring that to you in today's video. But before we get there, um, Look at the, the GFS ensemble here. This is the upcoming seven day period. Weather than average across the northwest of the UK here, Western Scotland, Northern Ireland, parts of the Republic of Ireland, especially across Western and Northern areas of uh, the Republic. We do have slightly wetter than average conditions seen by the GFS ensemble here, but get yourself further south over Ireland, England, Wales, drier than average, down into France, down into Iberia across the south of the continent here, give or take a little bit of wetter than average across parts of Austria, for example. But generally speaking, actually, this is a drier theme for a large swathe of Europe here. Remember also in yesterday's video, we looked at the drought monitor or the, the, the equivalent to the, the European drought monitor. And that's something we're going to be honing in on as we build the summer forecast with regards to the rainfall that we've seen, not only during the winter season, but more so even during the spring season that can have a feedback influence to the atmosphere that's going to be something that's going to be discussed here in the channel as well and i've already explained to you my thinking with regards to the uh, teleconnections and uh, some of the aspects that we looked at in years going by uh, a little bit uh, skewed because of the level of warmth that we've got within the global um, atmosphere, land area, but even more so the sea surface temperature profile of the Atlantic is running very, very warm compared to average. But anyway, I'm, I'm slightly digressing. As you can see here, and this has been highlighted here in the channel for a good week or so now at least, uh, the drying theme as we move towards mid and late month here. So as I play through the animation here, you can see that the UK and Ireland turns uh, increasingly drier than average and this is the period 20th through the 27th of April but interestingly enough here if you look at the two meter temperature anomalies for the upcoming seven day period uh, you can see here this is the upcoming five day warmer than average uh, very very warm compared to average across pretty much all of the, the continent there's not really anywhere on mainland Europe as well as the UK and Ireland that is uh, going to see below average conditions through the upcoming five day period but as you can see here with the along with the the uh, precipitation anomaly we've got this decrease in temperature quite significant drop in temperature coming up 
UK and Ireland period between the 20th and the 14th and the 19th of April here. So we are going to see quite a significant shift just simply by pulling that ridge from Europe out towards the west, out over the Atlantic, we're pulling our winds more from a northwesterly direction as opposed to a west to southwest direction that we have at the moment. And this is going to be a very sh big shock to the system, especially for the heart of Europe, where it has been so warm compared to average, really from, you know, through a good part of March, good part of April so far, this is going to be a, a real shock to the system for Central Europe in particular. But even the UK and Ireland, you notice here that we go from warmer than average to colder than average. Then we've got a little bit of milder than average that flirts. And then the GFS Ensemble still maintains that cooler than average flavor of weather as we move towards the 22nd through the 27th of April here. So we've got a drying theme and a cooling down theme as we move towards mid and late month. That is the first take home. That becomes that's becoming the, the new the new saying here in the channel. The take home of today's video. <laughs> um, I try my best to to avoid repeating the same words because I, I do have an awful habit of doing that, and it frustrates me. But it must frustrate you even more. So anyway, let's look at the the multi model run. This is first and foremost the the monthly breakdowns here. This is a quick and dirty look. Not saying by any stretch that any of these model runs are going to essentially do what they're showing. This is still a wee while away. We're still in April. We've still got the month of May to see the new data coming out next month. Uh, we also have the, the pattern, how the pattern will evolve over the next um, you know, two to four, even five weeks or so. It'll be, it's going to be interesting to see how this develops. And uh, we'll look at the, the summer. We'll also look at the... The Atlantic hurricane season uh, coming up as well, uh, especially in the live stream. We're going to try and hone in on a little bit more about that. We'll also talk a little bit more about what factors get taken into consideration. What elements do we look at to build a seasonal forecast? That's going to be looked at, and I'll hopefully try to answer some questions as well uh, on the video on Sunday afternoon. But this is the GA, the JMA. So this is the Japanese model geo potential height anomalies for the month of May. Uh, so this is a monthly breakdown. You can see here that we do have, uh, you know, stronger uh, heights. And so uh, uh, the core of high pressure looks to be centered between Scandinavia and Greenland during the month of May. Uh, that would suggest to me, if you've got the strongest heights uh, kind of uh, on the northern side of the UK or north up towards the Norwegian Sea, you tend to have a little bit of a, a negative uh, sitting just to the south of the UK, possibly over the Bay of Biscay. That may mean a fairly dry overall month, especially across the northern UK, wetter than uh, average, possibly across further south. You've got that threat with low pressure to the south, uh, driving uh, energy northwards into a, a blocked area of high pressure. Could have some quite settled conditions, dry conditions, warm conditions across northern England, Scotland, northern Ireland possibly a, a threat of something more thundery uh, across southern UK, England, Wales, southern Ireland, France could see some thundery conditions from this situation also. Looking at the month of June, you can see here that this actually could be quite a warm and dry month based on the latest G JMA model here. So you've, you've got the, the strongest heights actually across Western Europe here. We've got a bit of a negative over the, the North Atlantic. That's a bit of a, a positive North Atlantic oscillation signal, which can be quite a warm signal for early portions of a, of a June and the summer months, should I say. You've got the negative here, possibly across the North Atlantic, and you've got a positive over the UK and Ireland here. So a warm, dry theme may be on offer, something thundery, a little bit cooler across central, possibly even Eastern Europe, based on this. I know it may not be overly clear, but I can't actually blow the map up any more than that, uh, I have at the moment. This is the month of July. Interesting stuff off of GMA. You've got actually uh, what could be a positive uh, across the south, negative across the north here. Quite a westerly, possibly mobile type of, uh, of, of weather pattern for the month of July. You can see here that uh, strongest heights 
across Spain, Portugal, and southern portions of Europe, Mediterranean, could be quite a hot July across the south of Europe here, but possibly a back and forth type scenario, especially across uh, more northern and western areas of the UK and Ireland here, when you've got this uh, overall synoptic look. So uh, interesting stuff for the month of July, month of August here, you can see that we've still got that uh, um, um, interesting look here. We've got actually got quite a lot of positive up across Greenland, the far north here, We've got a negative in between, and then we've got quite a strong ridge across the south of Europe here. Still another quite hot looking signal here across southern Europe. But this block uh, to the north here may uh, suppress any kind of weak jet uh, further south here. But you've got this uh, possible negative uh, over the North Sea, over Scandinavia here. That could be quite a, a, a back and forth type scenario here. Could be a thundery. Uh, even cool, damp kind of scenario as well is also possible um, with this overall look. So that's the JMA. Let's have a look at the, the 500 millibars for the DWD, which is the German model here. This is the month of May, and you can see here quite a lot of uh, neutral heights here uh, sitting across the majority of Europe here. So no clear signal here for high or low pressure, but... Notice here the strong positive here over Greenland, over Iceland. That is a negative NAO signal. So therefore, we could maintain... Um, there's no clear indication, really, with this overall situation for the month of May. Let's have a look at June off the DWD. And you can see here we've got a positive here, slightly to the west of the UK and Ireland. There may be a little bit of a west-northwest or northerly component to this situation if that was to materialise. Possible lower pressure over uh, the North Sea, over the near continent, with higher pressure to the west uh, of the UK and Ireland here. How close that ridge may be would determine how uh, how much of a, a temperature profile you may be dealing with uh, with this overall scenario. These are just scenarios, obviously. Then the month of July, interesting stuff. Uh, we've got some quite strong positive here extending from uh, Western Iberia. Iberia is itself up the western side of the UK and we've got quite a lot of blocking here to the north up towards Iceland and the Norwegian Sea here uh, so that could be um, a, a situation that uh, also remains fairly dry we may have a bit of a northeasterly component to the, the overall flow but again it can sometimes be diff hard to differentiate between what type of signal are these models portraying this is only the 500 millibar pattern here if i've got time in today's video we'll look at the precipitation and temperature as well but this is the month of august and that there to me looks like a cooler weather theme especially when you've got um you know no clear signal of of negative to the north but when you've got a lot of strong blocking here uh, not blocking but a, a stronger subtropical ridge that's probably better the uh, better way to describe it you've got um a, a strong ridge north um you know north africa southern portions of europe you've got a lot of congregation of heat here you tend to find that there's more atlantic influence possibly cool and wet across the uk and ireland with this overall scenario let's move on and look at the met office model now and this is for the month of may you can see here quite a lot of blocking across say the north of the uk over scandinavia extending into the norwegian sea here no real clear signal for, for a, new, a negative here, but if you've got the strongest heights just in the north of the UK, Scandinavia, towards Iceland here, and you've got this kind of um, neutral height field uh, to the southwest of the UK and Ireland here, this may mean that you've got more low pressure to the southwest, higher pressure to the northeast. That could be a warm, dry uh, theme, especially for Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England possibly a threat of thunderstorms uh, to the south of the UK that may try to migrate northwards towards the southern UK. That may mean a dry north, wetter south for the UK. Moving on to the month of June, you can see here that there's quite a lot of uh, higher pressure to the west over the Atlantic here. That may mean that we've got more of a negative over the near continent, northwestly airstream uh, effect in the UK and Ireland. If you've got the strongest heights, over the Atlantic, a bit more northwesterly flow may mean um, a, a slightly cooler flavour of weather 
um, in the month of June. Looking at the month of July, uh, and similar to the previous models here, we've got this kind of negative uh, over or just the north of the UK, the strongest heights, so a strong subtropical ridge to the south of the UK. Always, often when you've got the strongest ridge over Spain, Portugal, France, you tend to find that there's more Atlantic influence over the UK and Ireland. It's the opposite. Remember early last summer in June that we seen hot and dry or had more uh, thundery influence over Spain, Portugal and France. When you've got the strongest heights compared to average across the north, you tend to find negative heights further south. And it's the opposite when you have the, the strongest heights to the south. You've got uh, usually more mobility, more Atlantic influence, more uh, unsettled conditions potentially for the, the northern half of the UK. Moving on to the month of August, and you can see here that there's quite a lot of region trying to extend and, and exert its influence uh, towards the UK and Ireland. That could be a dry and fairly hot look to the model based on this, what I'm seeing here. So this is the Met Office for the month of August here. Let's have another quick look and see if we can look at precipitation because that can also be quite an interesting one. Let's look at two meter temperature anomalies first. This is the month of May, and uh, you can see here for the month of May, it is warmer than average, quite firmly above average, actually, for the UK and Ireland here. No real signal. It looks as if there's a lot of heat everywhere, which uh, we know there's going to be a little bit of uh, areas of cool. But th this is the month of June. Again, very, very warm. No real uh, clear indicator or signal. July and the month of August all looking like a bit of a, a blowtorch, uh, if you want to put it that way. Let's have a look at the precipitation of the Met Office model for the month of May so far. And you've actually got quite a dry look uh, going by the, uh, the, the Met Office model for May. Looking at the month of June, again, no real indicator. You could argue that it's actually slightly drier than average for the month of June. July peps up the rainfall a little bit. Remember, it had the... Uh, what, you could argue would be a negative over the UK and Ireland, strongest heights further south across Iberia and France. You can see here that Iberia is drier than average, wetter than average across the UK and Ireland. That would actually uh, make sense given what it's showing for the 500 millibar pattern. Looking at the month of August, remember it showed quite a lot of ridging, so therefore you don't see an awful lot of a, a, a negative or positive anomaly in terms of precipitation across much of Europe. Uh, never mind uh, much of the UK here. So quite interesting stuff, actually. So yeah, th this is a very quick and dirty first look at the multi model runs with regards to June, July, August in particular, as well as the month of J uh, May as well. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think. It doesn't really help much, if I'm being honest, these uh, long range models at the moment. Uh, but it was just a quick glance at it anyway. Going to discuss this more in the coming days. We will look at the, the near term, so the rest of this week on into the weekend in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for that. Like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate your, your, your view, your subscription. Uh, and I'll see you all being well tomorrow with more. Bye for now.